taking a look at the Asamil Hebrew course. If you're not familiar with Asamil, they are a French publishing company that publish books primarily in French, of course. Uh, they do have these books available in English, beginner to intermediate. Uh, they have something for kids, and that's phrase books. Uh, most of their books, sixty, most of their books are in French. I think it's something like sixty to eighty languages. Uh, they have about, I'm not mistaken, about half of those also available in German. So interesting company, They're worth checking out. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a comparison of the Yiddish and Hebrew course they offer, both in English. I've already done a review of the Yiddish uh, course a little while ago, so let's see. You can see here the uh, part of the layout is actually fairly similar. So lessons one to eighty-five. The first lesson being morning. Uh, really good morning when you read the lesson, but lessons one to thirty. Uh, excuse me, eighty-five. Good morning in the Yiddish course. So. The number of lessons are the same. Uh, the books are about the same size, really. Uh, if you look, they're yeah, just about the same size. Um, they both have the dictionary in the back. Let's see. Yeah, have a dictionary in the back for the uh, words used in within the uh, the lesson. Uh, there is a little bit of a difference, though, when it comes to the presentation. Um, from the get-go, they are really nice to give you the <laughs> the Hebrew um, pronunciation throughout the book, right? So they'll give you, you technically don't need the, the Hebrew alphabet for the Hebrew course. As you can see here, they give you the translation along with the, uh, the Romanized form. So you can just read it. Romanized. Uh, the Yiddish course, on the other hand, does not do that. <laughs> you are expected to uh, to learn the writing system in the Yiddish course, so a little bit of a heads up. Um, they do make it fairly easy on you uh, when it comes to this, though. They this is something I actually very much appreciate about the Hebrew course and the Yiddish course is that they don't because the alphabets are so different, if you're not familiar with the uh, the Hebrew alphabet, it's, it's quite different from the the Roman alphabet that the that we use in English. So it's actually read from right to left. Uh, there are no capital letters. Technically speaking, they don't, I guess, normally use the like vowel sounds. They have vowels in, within the spoken language, but when writing, you wouldn't write the vowels. So it kind of comes out looking like Czech. I guess would be the closest uh, approximation. So I don't know if you're not familiar with Czech, then you know don't worry about it. But let's see. Uh, so they give you the the, the alphabet here. Uh, these are the printed letters, and that's primarily what you're going to be reading. And then they give you cursive letters. So that's the handwritten one. Those are a little bit different. Um, it's a little bit faster to write like that than it is to write the printed ones. And then they give you the pronunciation. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first lesson here. Uh, like all the Awesome Mill courses, they give you a translation. I believe normally the Awesome Mill's target language, the one you're learning, is on the left. And then the translation would be on the right, but it's the opposite for the Yiddish and Hebrew course. Uh, so you read from right to left, if you're not familiar with the Hebrew alphabet or the Arabic alphabet, so it's pretty much the same. And uh, they, they're they pretty nice. They do give you these vowel sounds, these vowel marks here throughout, so you can read this as bo, ker, so bo, ker, tov, right? And uh, when you get, however, to the exercises, they actually exclude those after the word for exercise translation, so see what comes into focus. So you will get increasingly longer sentences that do not have the sound, so you, it's more authentic, I guess you could say. Um, the nice thing about these lessons is that they do start out very, very slowly, so you're not expected to use all of the alphabet at once, which is actually very, very nice, because some courses tend to give you a lot of alpha, you know, if it's a foreign alphabet, or foreign writing system, they tend to shove it off on you all at once, which makes it a little harder to read. Asamil is actually very easy going in the sense, the first few lessons are very, very short, and they get increasingly longer. 
And uh, so you're introduced to a little bit of the alphabet at a time, and they will go over the alphabet throughout the, uh, the course. Let's see here. It's nice, they actually, uh, after the, the dialogue, they give you, they, repr <laughs> they reprint it, showing you the reading direction. They make it a little bit easier to read. So they give you uh, from right to left, um, bo, ker, bo, yeah, that's a little weird, so, b, o, but, ker, to let you know that it's, uh, so you can see here the, k, the q, u, e, q, e, is actually, it's supposed to be read in this direction, as you can see, as you can see here, bo, ker, but um, they let you know that it's part of one block, so, cause this is a k. So, yeah, they're, they really help you a lot with learning it, and they explain a little bit of the history of the vowels, why it's different, uh, how it's not normally used, and then, uh, yeah, you heard that right, not normally used, apparently. Uh, most people don't really write the, uh, the vowels, so you kind of have to know the word, so it's a little interesting. Um, the exercise, the first one is for translation, they will give you the answers to that on the right side. So I guess they flip it around there. Uh, let's see. And they will give you also on the left side here the, the transcription. And then afterwards you have lesson two, which lesson or excuse me, lesson two, exercise two, which is a fill in the blanks, which is again, if you're not familiar with Awesome Mill, that tends to be the standard, kind of the standard. They give you the lesson, which with the dialogue, and then comes with the translation. The fir, uh, excuse me, the first exercise, which is translation. Both uh, the dialogue and the first exercise, which is translation, will be on the CDs. And the exercise number two is not, because it's fill in the blank. And it's a rehash of the vocabulary. Sometimes I use it a little bit differently, but it's to kind of help you drill that in. And uh, let's see. They do give you pronunciation notes on the uh, side here, on the bottom, excuse me. Uh, it's a nice layout of Awesome Mill. They will give you a lot of uh, notes at the bottom. This one, again, so this is a good example, actually, on the same page, lesson two. Again, two sentences, and then, as you can see there, they repeat the two sentences to help you with the reading. To, they break it down, basically, into a block. Black, blue, black, blue. And there we go, same thing again. Uh, the vocabulary repeated into sentences that do not have the dots. So, again, you get both the Hebrew that it uses the dots uh, for the main text, and then you get it without that. As you can see here, by lesson three, you already have four sentences. And I forget if they, where they begin with it, but since the cursive system is actually different, it's a little bit of a different alphabet, or its own, I guess you could say. Let's see if we can find it. Maybe I'm getting it mixed up, but I believe they actually add in the cursive writing system. There we go. Yeah, so they eventually kind of move into uh, giving you the cursive writing system. Yeah, I think that's what it was. So they do give you the cursive writing system for the exercise. For exercise one, that becomes the cursive writing system without the dots. So you will have a lot of practice with that. Uh, at the end of the book, is a grammar of the language with references and whatnot, just pretty simple and straightforward. Um, there's the dictionary for the book. It's, again, very straightforward. They give it Hebrew, English, English, Hebrew, so it's overall a very good book, I would say. The audio is pretty clean. Um, it's not a lot of background noise. It's very nice audio. It tends to be a little bit slow, especially at first, um, that's, you know, kind of get you used to it. And if you're interested in learning Yiddish as well, or if you're interested in learning both of these languages, I might recommend Yiddish first. And the reason for that being is if you already speak English, assuming, <laughs> I'm going to assume you do since you're listening to this video, um, Yiddish and English are related because they are both West Germanic languages. Uh, Yiddish is closer to German, uh, than English, but... It has a lot of influence from Hebrew and Aramaic, so that's one thing. It uses the Hebrew alphabet, as you can see here. Let's go ahead and look at 
in here, 27. You can see here. Uh, you notice it doesn't really have the dots. What's interesting about it is that it has, they do use uh, separate letters for vowels. So in that sense, if you're interested in learning the writing system, it might actually be easier with Yiddish, in my opinion, because you're not going to be straining yourself with trying to learn not only new grammar for a completely different language, although Yiddish is a different language, but, you know, it, it, a lot of, there's a lot of common vocabulary or vocabulary, vocabulary that's quite similar, especially if you have any familiarity with German. And uh, the nice thing here is they also give you the writing system uh, they repeat each dialogue with the handwritten version of it. So it's very clean, don't worry, it's not somebody's actual handwriting. So, like some of the older books might have. Uh, so it's it's very it's very nice. Um, gives you a chance to repeat the lessons with both writing forms. So yeah, that's the Asimil Hebrew course.